All right, guys, welcome to Cappuccino Cunnilingus, episode number 25. <laughs> right? How, how, did you like that? Yeah. Yeah, you digging that? Yeah. I'm digging it. I'm, I think we, I think I want to keep it. Uh, for those wondering, yes, we have an official theme song now after 25 episodes. Uh, quarter of the way to 100. Quarter of the way to 100. Who knows how many more changes are going to happen. Exactly. Uh, but I wanted to give a shout out to the composer of that remix, uh, Mr. Kraus Neal. Uh, he yeah. is a fantastic DJ. I've been sitting on this for a while, and I just wanted to wait for the right moment to put it out there. Uh, also, we're going to be using the new logo that we had designed uh, by a very good friend, Miss Allison Hamilton. Uh, a local comedian from Meridian, Mississippi, who spent some time here in Melbourne. Uh, she helped me design, you know, a digital format for the logo, and you know, we talked about some things and how to, you know, improve it and give it its own little style and flair. So, wanted to give them a shout out because, you know, as much as, you know, I consider podcast and art, you know, making music and actually making, you know, designs and pictures, that to me is real art. Uh, I've always been, I've always held true that, you know, give artists credit when credit is due, so. No doubt. Uh, this week, episode 25, you already heard him. Give it up for Mitch, coming back again. Yo! Happy to be back, brother. It's, it's been, been a long yeah. time. <laughs> it has been an entire summer without you. Yeah. Uh, I feel we, like we got Chipotle maybe twice. Yeah. One of those times, I saw you for two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, we we've both been very busy. You know, I've been, you know, if you've been catching the podcast on certain sites, you know, if you're catching it on iTunes or Google Play, you saw that, you know, I didn't put one out for two weeks. That's because, you know, just between personal health and traveling and just being busy with work in general, you know, we've both had busy schedules this summer. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, I mean, it's been... It's less than a year, and you're already, and we, you're at episode 25. Like you're putting content out. Like you gotta think about it. My goal for the summer was one a week. Word, I like and that. I almost hit that. I like that. Well, I'll say like the drunken Dallas. I love the drunken Dallas, but it's like two a month. <laughs> so the fact that you're 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 on top of it at least. So you're mm -hmm. constantly putting out new content, yeah. and it's all it all seems to be different people and like different styles of podcasts so it's nice yeah and that's what i wanted to get at like with the podcast in general was i wanted to talk to as many different people and get as many different views as possible because my eventual goal is to become like a level of you know joe rogan experience or hell yeah uh smodcast or mark Marin. you know i want to get to the level where i can have interesting people that everybody wants to listen to as opposed to who I want to listen to. Hell yeah. Well, and, I, uh, I like that you brought up big names. Yeah. Because um, one of my favorite things that I heard from Tyler, the creator, was mm -hmm. they asked him who his competition was, and this was before he was famous. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Kanye West. <laughs> and they were like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> you're nowhere in the ballpark of... I would, argue, I would argue that Tyler was in the ballpark when he was just coming up because Kanye West wasn't putting out any music at that time. That's fair. He was on a hiatus. That's fair. And because of personal reasons, I'm sure. But, like, yeah. just overall, you know, if you're not... If you're not taking up a part of a weekly newscast mm -hmm. that week, you're not relevant in the music industry. If you're not putting something out or having some sort of news spilled about you, you're not relevant that week. That's so that's, you know, that's 10 spots in the Billboard chart down. You know? Yeah. Consider that over long weeks of time. That's that's hard for somebody to come back from that. No, that makes sense. You're right. But I would argue that, you know, people like Tyler, people like Donald Glover, you know, yeah. they their competition is the top. Yeah. Because they have cult following. They have yeah. underground artists that, you know, will listen to them and collab and will, you know, be like, hey, can you feature on this? And That's then, fair. you know, those singles get up there. You know, your competition is everybody that you're going to gun for up at the top. Yeah, I was going to say exactly how you ended it, because his whole thing was, 
hey, why the fuck am I going to compare myself to anybody who's where I'm at? Yeah. Like, Kanye is filming, he's doing music, he's doing all the shit that I want to do, mm -hmm. so he's my competition. Not this other person who's also trying to get noticed. Like, no, my competition is this big person. I'll put it in another, yeah. I'll put it in another way, if you're an MMA fan. You know, if you're a welterweight, you're not looking, you're not looking to fight Mickey Yall, you're looking to fight Khabib. Maybe not Khabib, yeah. actually, but, yeah. you know, you want, you want that number one contender spot. Yeah. You want to be right underneath that championship. You want to be right underneath the top, because that's how, you know, moving up those ranks, that's yeah. where you need to, that's where you need to be. I heard something exciting, I think it was the fighter and the kid, um... They had, it was either, because I know Joe just had TJ Dillashaw on, but I think he had uh, Dillashaw and Dwayne Ludwig. And Ludwig uh, and Boss Rudin. And Boss Rudin. okay, so it wasn't his, so it was Fighter and the Kid. Uh, it was Dillashaw, and he was talking about how right now what he really wants to do is first get the belt, and then go fight Mighty Mouse. Because his goal, <laughs> his goal is to be like the pound for pound best. So yeah. he has to crush the, the you pound have to... for pound best. <laughs> yeah, Mighty Mouse is <laughs> exactly. The yeah, be a great problem. Fight, the though. problem is, can TJ cut that extra ten? <laughs> mm, I don't know. Yeah, that is. Mm. Or would it be? Cool. Would it be a catch? Would it be a catchweight fight? I mean, he did start like every, like his foundation's wrestling. Mm. So I would. I mean. I don't know. Like, I'm a, my assumption would be this dude's cut weight so many times that he knows how to, he knows how do, to do, it. Do, it, do it most efficiently and, like, be but able to But how survive. much does that take out of you? No, absolutely, that's fair, too. I don't know. I never ha I've never cut weight right now. I'm in the process of trying to gain weight. You've always been in the process of trying to gain weight. I know. <laughs> if anybody knows how to cut weight, it's me. And even I'm not that good at it. My my whole thing is I just drink lots of water and then I eat like maybe two crackers and that's it for lunch. Keep your body on the base level. <laughs> yeah. But like I'm sitting here drinking iced tea and eating mac and cheese. So I was just like, yeah, whatever. But I wanted to have you back this week because it's been a long time coming and uh, we needed to hit on a couple things. Yes. So first off, I wanted to talk about uh, a little bit of tech. You know, yesterday we had the news come out that Uber just put out their first driverless car yes. vehicle. Uh, it does... Robots. It does... <laughs> You'll have time to talk about that. I want to know because I want to know. <laughs> they still do have somebody in the driver's seat. Yes. So you know, there's ever a reason for you know an emergency, you know, an emergency to happen. That person can take over and you know take over that position as whenever possible. Wait, 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 wait. So my question. Okay. Um, is it? There's an Uber driver in this in this car that drives itself. Yes. Or do you, as the passenger, sit in the driver's seat? No, there is a driver. There is somebody in the driver's seat of the car because so there needs there needs to be somebody to start the car, essentially. <laughs> okay. Okay. That, all right. I understand. Because that. it's all because it's all you know humans spending for their own self interest here. Yeah. You need somebody to have that position. Well, I was going to say like how does that person get paid now? Well, they're still doing a job, aren't they? Even if it's just there for emergency purposes. Yeah, but so are all right, so how are they paying for this person's daily routes but paying for the technology to do this? So Well, it's Uber it's, themselves, it's Uber's car themselves. You know, the company put out this car okay. to do this. Okay. So they hired this person to be there in event of emergency. Okay. So they'll, I'm I, sure they'll get a paycheck, but then they'll also get like a daily rate on top of it for, you know, just being there. Yeah, because I was wondering basically if now Uber's going to cost more because now they have this person sitting there well, not necessarily doing anything. The person's always been there. Yeah, but... The car wasn't driving itself, so why have the car, like, the self-driving technology if you're going to have a backup person anyway? Why let people with Teslas drive Ubers, then? If they can eventually drive themselves. If the technology's there in the car already, and 
you know, you can essentially let it have its way on the road, you know, just by pushing a button. Okay. Why not? If why not? Are if the cars out there already have the technology to do it, why let those people that have those cars drive for you? If you're worried about you know losing money on something. I mean that's fair. I mean what I could I don't know my my best. What, the way I think about it right now is what I, what I honestly think would be a little bit more efficient, but I don't know anything about this business, so mm. I don't know. But would be, how is a taxi hub set up? So, like, I'm talking, like, the hub, not, like, cars driving around. Yeah. So, let's say you get a call, let's say someone uses their Uber app to pick them up at this spot. Uh-huh. What if there were smaller hubs where... Basically, the cars got turned on, they followed a GPS route to this location. Okay. And then, I mean, yes, there's that span of time where someone won't be behind the wheel, but let's say, no, I don't know, because I was going to say, let's say you get picked up, now you could be the emergency person who, sit behind, who sits behind the wheel. Well, but that's also would pretty be... shitty, because now I realize you're going to be sitting in a car by yourself being driven by something. You would be, if you were to jump in that driver's seat, you could potentially be held responsible. That's true. Yeah, you could be li- Yeah, you'd be liable for yeah. fucking it up. Yes, you can do that. So, oh, I don't know. Why do it? I, don't, I, I just don't get why. Like, because that's 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 the way the future is. We're gonna have automation for some of the jobs that we know are obsolete now. You know, it's proved. But but Uber, are- Uber and Lyft have proven. The taxis are obsolete and outdated and are on their way out. You know, taxi companies are fighting us every chance they get, trying to essentially bribe city councils to, you know, create laws like they did in Austin, where, you know, you know, you have to have you know, this type of background check and you have to pay this fee and this fee and it can't just be, hey, get in my car and go. You know, it's, you know, you have to follow you know so many statutes and laws and so why keep the person think about have you seen the event of emergency in the event of an emergency like let's say let's say the car is stalled out somewhere like let's say you're in a tesla for example okay tesla's on autopilot and you're driving from la to sacramento you know you're barely gonna make it there but you know, you're worried that the car might have not might not have enough juice, but you know of a spot nearby that has a charging station mm. that isn't on the map yet that can't be put into a GPS. Okay. Person's there to take it off autopilot, go to that spot, charge up, get back on the road. That's fair. That is fair. Otherwise, that's, I was, otherwise that's, I was going to say that's a one in a million situation, but you no, know no. with car technology being the way that it is and moving towards that route, you know, that could eventually be the future of that, you know, having that person there in case of an emergency. I see, I feel you. I was just looking at it as, have you ever seen the movie Killing Them Softly? Yeah. Yeah. So, the part where Brad Pitt's like, why are you going to give him a beating? You're going to kill him anyway. And they're like, no, 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 like, we're not. Like, he just, he, he just needs, he just needs to be taught a lesson. He has to get beat up. Yeah. Fine. Whatever. That's what they want to do. They want him to be, get beat. Okay, fine. So they beat the shit out of him. Mm-hmm. And he, Ray, Lee, Ray Liotta gets his ass kicked. And then the next day they're like, yeah, so we're going to have to kill him. <laughs> so so, so why'd, you, why'd you put him through the beating if you were going to kill him anyway? Because it sent a message. Yeah. But, but it's for your own self gratitude. Yeah. That's. Okay. Because I, I mean, mean, that's my thinking here is like, why? Like, go. Just like, all out. Like, but I don't. Yeah. I liked your point. That was valid. That and it's, that's that's a one in a million thing, you know? It's. But that's what you have to account for. Yeah. That is, like, because. That's something to account for. Yeah, because the company's screwed if. It, if somebody's yeah. tra- If somebody stranded five miles away from their destination. Middle of the uh, California desert, you know they're they're not gonna walk it. They're gonna be like, "Hey, uh, your car's out of juice. I need to get where I'm going. What are you gonna do?" Yeah. You know, just being able to have somebody there to be like, "Hey, uh, 
do you know anywhere nearby where we can stop? And then, you know, you could look up something in Google because it might not have updated in the car. Or they yeah, might no, not have, yeah. you know, they might not know exactly where it is. Then that person could help the situation. That's fair. You know, I'm always for, you know, more brain power in a situation. You know, if, if somebody else has a better idea, by all means, please. Hell yeah. So okay. I would say, but you have something. No, no, no. Just because you said that. So <laughs> one thing I was told today okay. was the hardest part of this job that I'm going into uh -huh. is going to be not correcting other trainers. <laughs> <laughs> because I, 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 I don't need to mention this story, but I told you the story earlier. And Which one? Squat. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I approached him, and I wasn't like, hey, man, like, why are you having him squat that way? Like, I was like, is, like, what's the benefit to why you're doing this the way that you're doing this? Um, like, what was your thought process? How, how is this carrying over? Like, and, like, kind of got offended. <laughs> and then they were like, she was like, okay, you, you, you can't ask <laughs> people things. <laughs> um, like, shit, I forget, what, what, why did I, why did I bring that up, um, what were you, what did you say that made me think about that? I don't know, you, uh, <laughs> you got excited and I was like, go ahead. Um, accounting for one in a million, uh, I wish we had audio playback. <laughs> right? It's like, <laughs> as soon as this, like, I, after this is done, I'm like, oh, duh, I was supposed to say this. But, um... Yo, Jamie, pull that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, shit. All right. Yeah, whatever. Just let it be. Oh, we... All right. It was... Because I, I said the, hard, the hardest part was going to be me not correcting somebody. Mm -hmm. So me not speaking out. So what were we talking about that involved speaking out? How did we get into this? More brain power, somebody... More brain power, yes. Okay, so all, what, what I was trying to do was just learn, like, okay, mm -hmm. like, how, how can I take something from this situation, or, like, how could we benefit from it? Oh, okay, and the reason why she was like, don't ask questions, I was like, well, I'd like to learn, like, I wasn't talking shit, I was yeah. just trying to find out reasoning, she was like, yeah, he don't. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to so <laughs> he just wants he just wants to squat and look like a monster. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, that that's where I was going with that. So he to look like fucking King Kong and drag your girlfriend up the fucking Empire State Building. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> All right. So what was that? But it but it brings but it brings up the it brings up the question with like self driving cars, Uber, and whatnot. With this technology being essentially tested now, uh, how much longer does like that industry have before it's 100% automated? Mm, how that. much? How much longer can that economy keep going? Well, it, it depends. So, I mean, really, it can be gone tomorrow, mm -hmm. but society would not accept that. No, that has to be incremental we, change. Yeah, we would, f people would freak the fuck out. You would start the fuck out. I, I would. <laughs> <laughs> start, well, I, I mean, people that lose their jobs, like, mm -hmm. like the amount of, the amount of industry that would get wiped out, people would go fucking crazy. Yeah. Would it be, could it be beneficial for the human race to go entirely automated? For sure. But at first, with the way that our economy is set up, mm -hmm. would, no, that'd be really, really bad for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, you could have the socio like the sociopathic outlook and just be like, oh, creative destruction. We can make this happen in six months. Mm -hmm. Or look at it as, oh, I'm a human. And kind of, how are we going to bullshit this as long as we can mm -hmm. until people start gravitating toward other industries? Yeah. So, I mean, really, it's, it's a matter of how quickly we're willing to adapt. Because, like, really, your body will adapt to anything. Your mind will adapt to almost, not, not anything, but, like, you, you'll you adapt to most situations. It's within a matter the limits, of not wanting to. Within the limits of human possibility. Yes, exactly. So, it's it's really just a matter of what people are willing to, um... Because a lot of people, they kind of... 
you know the whole the whole American dream concept of people being able to. Like, I see people post this shit all the time too. Oh, I can't wait until I'm thirty, and I and I can kiss my significant other on the forehead and look at our children eating cereal across the table and know that I made it. No, Fuck you're that. you're never ever ever going to feel like you made. I it. can't wait. I can't wait till I'm thirty. Wake up with four strippers in my bed. <laughs> kiss my weed plant. Yeah. <laughs> and then go out and drive my Tesla. Yes. All right. And that's when I'll say, shit, I made it. <laughs> yeah, I approve. I approve. I approve. <laughs> but, but you know what I'm saying? Like, too many people are searching for that, I've made it. I, what does I go, got there. And what then, does that say? What does that say about our generation, though? If that's what they want. If that kind of... American dream stability is what the goal is. What does that say about our generation? That we're the domesticated, like, house cat mm -hmm. version of what a human is supposed to be. Because here's the thing. Not necessarily. Well, success usually happens on the fringes. It's, mm -hmm. like, you need to partake in some level of constant growth in order to constantly innovate. Like, mm -hmm. you need to evolve in order to evolve. Yeah. So if you choose to just be stagnant, then what are you contributing? You're not not not. not I'm, not I'm not talking about to society. Like yes, to society, but what are you contributing to yourself mm -hmm. by being stagnant? Nothing. Like so many people, they they take these goals away from themselves because they don't want to commit to something mm -hmm. like that, like that large, and it's like. I wouldn't even consider that a large commitment. <laughs> well, no, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, a lot of people, they're, they're not willing to. Mm -hmm. It seems, at least. Because they're always, yeah, and, like, the whole the whole white picket fence thing. American, like, we want, like, we want to have that, that level of safe. Like, why? Why? I want you, like, why? I'm asking you why, and you're looking <laughs> at me. I I was going a whole different direction. I was going to say because of what kind of instability we grew up with. Like mm. our generation grew up with the you know the I would say the first the first, you know, childhood where the Amer the American family wasn't what it has always been. You know, mm. in America in the early 2000s, Shit the late 90s, divorces. Yeah. Fifty percent divorce rate. Yep. Yep. You know, with that kind of instability when it comes to a parental figure, when it comes to a parent having to work two jobs, you know, yeah. just to make the end, just to make ends meet for you and them. Mm -hmm. You know, what does that say when it comes to our time to be able to, you know, move forward and you know what kind of goals we want to set for ourselves? All right. Well, the funny thing you bring up there, I was about like the divorce rate too mm -hmm. it's like you're talking about stability but i feel like so many people have seen maybe not uh, maybe not stability but sustainability okay i was gonna say i feel like so many people our age have seen or gone through the divorce process mm -hmm. that i mean frankly they don't give a fuck about wanting to be with anybody yeah so that that, uh, that i was i just wanted to say for because you were talking about not before you you switched to sustainability, and now that's stability. Yeah. So the only stability there would be with yourself, and everybody knows that if you spend too long by yourself, the last thing you are is stable. Yeah. <laughs> I can attest to that firsthand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. That that was out of everything you said. That yeah, like that was the only thing that I was like, oh, I don't know. But everything else, yeah, no, that actually makes that absolutely makes sense. I like that perspective too. But the sustainability part of that, too, is if you're the only one that you have to rely on oh, when it yeah. comes to providing something, mm -hmm. you know, I have friends that, you know, they're, they're the only ones that they have to provide for, like, for themselves, maybe a pet or two, yeah. or five, or ten, depending on who it is, you know. It's easy to make ends meet for that person and, you know, their pets. You know, they can afford to go out at the end of the month 
and buy themselves a three thousand dollar computer rig to stream games on Twitch to make a little bit more money on the side. Yeah, you know, it makes sense for them to, you know, go out and get an ultra HD 4K TV, you know, during Christmas time because yeah. you know they got a bonus at the job they're working at because you know they're the only ones they need to provide for. You know, when it's when there's a movement out there for, you know, our generation to not have kids, you know, at such a young age where our parents and grandparents had, you know, families built by the time, like, large families built by the time they were 25, 26. Yeah, I was going to say, my mom already had my brother born when she was my age. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember how old she was when I was born, but my brother was definitely already born by how old I am now. Well, add... The difference of years between you and your brother. <laughs> well, well, no, to... I, 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 I can't remember if she was 20 or 21. So All right, I, you narrowed it down to two years. Well, no, and, and then I'm three and a half years younger than my brother, so I, she was either 23 or 24. There you go. Yeah, so close, 22. Yeah. But I'm just saying, yeah. But, you know, you're talking about a huge difference in, you know, socioeconomic status and just overall a whole bunch of different shit and... What type of, what type of work there was? Twenty one. Sorry, <laughs> she was born in seventy. My brother was twenty one. I'm on nineteen ninety one. I'm sorry. I'm sure she's proud of you that you figured that out. <laughs> her so, her son can do basic math. Yes. <laughs> how how is that? How's that? One hundred and fifty thousand dollar college degree. Awesome. <laughs> oh. Uh. But, you know, with, with so much of that, just, you know, you have to do this because it's the way that we were raised and, you know, the way that, you know, you're supposed to do it. You know, it's a whole different ballgame now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially with technology, we're seeing what can happen to industry. Yeah. Uh, what can... Oh, be... gone. Yeah. Dude, like, uh, to be real... Print media is dead. It just, yes, and there's no reason for art. I personally believe there's a reason, but when you look at the grand scheme, there's no re GNC should not be a thing. What do you mean? Just as a store, vitamin like so. So many of these shops, like there, there's no like, with with warehouses and overnight shipping. It should, like, th it shouldn't be a thing. There's so much overstock. Yeah. There's so much shit, but it's all built around, we have to keep humans employed, so what do we have to do? We have to come up with these tasks and jobs for them to do. So even though the technology has hit the point where it's like, people come in and they're like, bro, this is $20 cheaper online. So, like, we match, but, like, really, there's no reason for us to even be there. Yeah. Like, food store, I totally understand. But I, I hate the say, idea of Amazon drone, will, drone, like, dropping groceries. I hate I that. I will say... It, okay. I will say this. Stores in general, like, malls, I've, I've, ta I've heard a lot of, like, people from the previous generation talk about, you know, malls are dying. You know, we need to, we need to reinvigorate the malls. I don't see that. <laughs> I see malls as actually thriving now compared mm -hmm. to maybe six years ago. They might have been dying a little bit, but I see, I see, like essentially commerce rethriving again. However, I see. I don't see it here. It's weird here. Yeah, I was gonna say like. But I... I'll say, but I will say this: there's, there is, there is trouble with. Uh, large, large buildings with vacancies, and you know how much how much is put into building uh, buildings that never get fucking finished, like that finished and filled with what's supposed to go there. There's a huge problem with that in Nevada. I don't remember. I I want to say millions because it'll really piss me off if it's with a B. But I think it's with a B. There's a building. Okay. Oh, God. I, I want to say 
I don't think it's Trump. Uh, maybe Fountain Blue? No. I can't recall. But he got 85% of the way done. Uh-huh. So much goddamn money that you would want to punch a baby in the face. <laughs> and they went bankrupt, so they just stopped. They just stopped building. They just stopped. It's just there. It's, it's an unfinished building it's, in the sky. It's just there. 85% done. Was it a skyscraper? Flat level? Oh, I... Because if it's a skyscraper, I find that hilarious. No, I don't think it's a skyscraper. It was just... So, like, like it might have just been, like, like a large, like, shopping center. Maybe. No, it was, like, a hotel. So, it multiple was, it, stories. It, like. Yeah, oh, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. I, well, well, when you... Sorry. Wh- where are we from? Skyscraper? What... <laughs> What do you think? I, I consider, think the buildings I consider, in New York. I consider anything above 15 floors a skyscraper. Oh, okay, skyscraper for sure. Then yes. Yeah, 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 skyscraper for sure. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look up. Look it up and send tw- uh, text me the picture. Okay. Because I find it interesting that... Because I do agree with you that, you know, large, we're, we're from New Jersey. We know what a skyscraper looks like, but like... To me, anything above 15 floors is tall. Because I know once I hit floor 15, I'm gassed. <laughs> if I'm going upstairs. <laughs> That's fair. So, you know, talking about uh, stores, like, you know, there's a huge problem with, you know, how how we're going to get we're going to get certain things done. Grocery stores are going to be on their way out within the next 25 years. I like going to the grocery store. And I don't like going to the... I, I don't like out. human interaction. It's, That's right. It, it was, was the fountain blue. I fucking knew it. It, it was, was fountain blue? 9.2 billion. 68 <laughs> stories. God damn it. Jesus. Bastard. And they didn't finish it. Jesus. 3,889 rooms. How many square feet is that? Hold on. I'm sure it's there. Copyright. Oh, uh, 100,000 square feet. Total gaming... Per floor, or in it total? Says, it says total gaming space, 100... Oh, gaming, so I assume casino. C- casino, yeah. Yeah. How total square feet, though? Because uh, if it's 100,000 for gaming, then you're not including hotel rooms. If you figure the average hotel room is between six and 800, and they have over 3,000... It was expected to include 95,000 square feet casino, 60,000 square feet spa, 3,300 seat performing arts center, 1,018 condo hotel units, 180,000 square feet of retail space, 400,000 square feet of indoor and outdoor conference space, nightclubs, 20, and 24 restaurants and lounges. That's over a million square feet, just from what you mentioned, not including hotel rooms. Jesus. So you're talking... Less than 10 million, but probably more than 5 million square feet of space. That's it. It topped out in 2008. They started building it in 2007. Shit, it is unfinished. Damn, send me that picture. Alright, I'll send you a blank. Yeah, do that. But, uh, like, just technology overtaking stuff like that, you know... Like there's a million hotels on the Las Vegas Strip. You know, oh, yeah. They don't need another one. You know. Yeah, so I'm like, well, why, what was the point? They just wanted their name because they're Fountain Blue. And yeah. A huge Fountain Blue in Miami. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, Miami's not going to be here in 50 years. <laughs> I know. That's why I moved here. <laughs> Take it it's in now. City. <laughs> Take it in now. Exactly. That house... That house ain't gonna be there. Nope. Nope. <laughs> that's gone. <laughs> One good hurricane, that's gone. Bro, uh, the, the beach has gotten so much shorter since I've, like, um... Since you've gotten here? I mean, since my family started coming here. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, maybe, like... Since ten, childhood. No. Maybe, like, nine years ago. I Just walked, in nine years, you've seen a difference. Yes. Shit. Like, we've lost beach, for sure. Shit. You want to change? Tell your tell your dad to change the house to waterfront property. <laughs> Just label it as waterfront now. Yeah, Dad. Don't don't worry. In ten years, you will be telling the truth. Yeah. <laughs> it's not false advertising. It's future proofing. Exactly. <laughs> oh my God. 
But yeah, like Amazon drones are gonna be a new thing. Like what I'm what I'm worried about is fucking Amazon drones delivering guns to people. <laughs> like to me that's that's the most worry I will get. I could care less, you know, you getting your hemp seeds and protein powder delivered to you. Like that I don't give a shit. But like what if somebody somebody getting, you know, ammonia and bleach in the same order, you know, that's essentially building a flying bomb in the sky. Well, I was actually, I was just going to say, what if somebody just, like, bought a bunch of shit individually from Amazon and got a bunch of drones to come to their house, and then they just, like, found a way to control all of the drones and create these sky bombs. Yeah. They could become a supervillain. Yeah. For real. Like, that, that's, <laughs> that's, the, that, that's the argument. There's... You know, let's say, you know, individually, you know, if you got, I mean, you can, they, they, they prove that, you know, with the items you can buy at a Hudson News at an airport, you can essentially build a one-shot gun. What's to say that you can't buy something from Amazon, have a drone drop to you, you know, in 30 minutes, and then you be able to go blow something up after that? Yep. You know. There's no way the FBI would be able to keep up with that. Nope. Which is actually, now I support it. <laughs> a little bit more. Are you saying you support domestic terrorism, sir? <laughs> I'm saying that I support <laughs> unrestriction. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> New South <laughs> The Wales Free Army. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God. Uh, but, like, so let me ask you this: With do you did you support drone registry? Um, is that you're forced to register when you get a drone? If you get a certain size drone, you have to register with the um, FAA, I think. Some form of agency, some three D agency. You know what? That is, I understand. Like, I don't necessarily. I'm not like, oh, I want to. I understand why they would do that though, just because you said the FAA, because. Mm-hmm. You have enough people who are like, <gasps> UFOs! Yeah, well, fuck those people. I, I'm <laughs> just saying, you have enough people that are like, UFOs! Let me, put, let, me, let me put it this way. The only time those people's opinion will matter is when you take that shit out into the woods. <laughs> when you start going into meth lab territory, that's when that shit, that's the only time you're going to listen to that shit. Interesting story. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I had... Like, just when I decided to move to Florida, uh-huh. I had, um, no, sorry, it was a year before I decided to move to Florida, I found out that it was illegal to live off the grid. Yeah. And I was like, son of a bitch. And then we were here. Uh-huh. And, um, we were doing something in the woods, and I was talking to a dude who, like, worked in the woods, and he was like, yo... The reason, I was like, I don't understand, man, like, you guys have, like, this is, like, conservation, like, you're doing all this, you got live animals over here, like, how are you against off-of-the-grid living? And he was like, well, hey, man, it's not so much that the state's against off-the-grid living, as much as they fly helicopters Mm -hmm. at night with, like, thermal sensors, Mm -hmm. and they just find a shit ton of meth labs in the woods. Yeah. From shacks. Yeah. So, like, because people decided to make meth in shacks in the woods, now people can't go live on their own in the woods. So, it's like... But you know what? Instead of... Instead of making it illegal to live off the grid, just legalize drugs. Tax them and sell them. Hey! (laughs) I agree! (laughs) You'd You'd be... First off, you'd be saving yourself tax money. Yeah. And second of all, you'd be getting tax money... Yeah, because guess what? If somebody wants to buy, if somebody wants to buy state-sponsored heroin or meth, they're gonna, they're gonna pay the forty-five percent excise tax on it. You know, they don't give a shit. Yeah, as long as they get their fix, you know, and instead, you're not criminalizing people who are peaceful. Yeah, no, you're that's... not. You're not making it a crime to be peaceful. I agree there. No. I'd rather I'd rather see people buy Florida brand cocaine than 
you know, somebody not be able to drink rainwater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember I was at a frat party and a guy snorted coke off of a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. He was wearing a denim vest. Wait, 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 wait. You don't have to say it out loud. Just nod to me. Was it here? No. Okay. <laughs> it was, um... It was back in Providence. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> if it's here, I would have believed you more. <laughs> oh, yeah, this dude was... He was, he was funny. <laughs> like, he always joked about it, but I never <laughs> saw him do it. And then he just ripped out a knife. <laughs> And I was like, oh, all right. Yeah, cool. That's how you want to do that. Yeah, yeah. do your thing, man. <laughs> I hope you rinse, wash, and sanitize that thing. <laughs> and my buddy looked over me and was like, you didn't think you was going to do that. <laughs> we went to some fucked up parties. <laughs> we did. <laughs> oh, God. If only I was sober enough to try remember. <laughs> Sorry, right. I was there for a few. Yeah. I, I, I can verify your stories. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, what was I talking about? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I was going to say, we kind of, for some reason, personal responsibility got brought into it. Uh-huh. So what were we talking about that led to personal responsibility? Oh, I was going to... We were talking about drones. Drones, yes. Yeah. Drones. With the Dakota Access Pipeline, yeah, literally within the last six months, North Dakota was the first state, and I think only state, to allow weaponized drones. Yeah, I remember reading into that into their law enforcement. Yeah, quote unquote. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. I definitely don't like that. Um. Yeah, I mean... And not, like, military drones, where it's just like, oh yeah, there's one guy, like, essentially playing aircraft simulator in a warehouse somewhere. No, it's literally some guy with an iPad 200 yards away oh. with a fucking drone oh, that no. has a gun on it. Oh no, okay. So I thought it was at least going to be somewhat like the military drone, where, like, no. they had... So it's like that, it's... You ever play that, uh, that Call of Duty, like, the death from above? Yeah. It's like that? Yeah. Oh, god damn it. No, don't. Oh. It's essentially that. How can you. How can you confirm who the individuals even are? Well, I mean, if you're. I mean, I'm sure if somebody had a drone outside this window right now, they could confirm, you know, at least partially, at least from your mustache, mm -hmm. that, that, yeah. that you are you. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Oh, but. Oh, I don't like that. That's. Mm. And that's how, that's essentially how they killed the guy in Dallas. They yeah. blew him up with a drone. I see. No due process whatsoever. I heard an interesting thing about that cat, though. Because I heard a lot of people say that they looked him up and couldn't find any record of the of, guy of, existing? Of, of him existing. Well, I'm sure after the fact. <laughs> Well, no, there's just bits and pieces. <laughs> Shut up. I mean, <laughs> overall, they like people looked him up because he was supposed to, like, he was supposed to be in the military. Like, he had these ranks. Yeah. They, they couldn't find anything on him. I did not read they it. They might have classified enough. them before people could get to them. Okay, that's entirely. I was gonna say I don't know at all because I didn't read enough. But I just know that people were that's saying what, this. That's what happened with uh, Chelsea Manning. Was a lot of the files that people wanted to look up mm -hmm. were essentially non-existent. Okay. What had happened was they had put them behind barriers and like classified them so that way only people dealing with that person could access them and you know that's fair. Supply certain information in a way. But how'd they find him? His ID, right? That's how like the Dallas guy. Yeah. Uh, like you know, I think no, they. I think they confirmed his identity from, like, eyewitness or something. I okay. Because I heard, but like I said, I don't know. Because I, I honestly didn't care enough about this to look very deep into it. But mm -hmm. what I heard 
was that they found his ID. So they blew him up, and all they found was the ID. Sounds eerily familiar to the people who drove these planes into buildings. We found their passports. Paper passports that yes. survive fucking thousand degree heat. Yes. So for me, that sounds a little bit like that. See. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do a quick Google search. Yep. U.S. Army. Okay. All right. I didn't even care to Google search, so I don't even know where it was found. So, <laughs> at least from what I'm reading, and it's very pieced together randomly. Okay. Uh, he was definitely military. Yeah. Police say after several hours of negotiating with intermittent exchanges of gunfire, the suspect was killed by a robot who detonated a C4 explosive. Uh... It doesn't say how they identified him. Okay. Uh... They do have pictures of his Facebook page, but I'm sure that's probably been taken down by now. Makes sense. <sighs> and, like, having, like, the the checklist that they have is, like, police say he was a loner who had bomb-making materials, ballistic vests, rifles, and ammo at his home. All right, Boo-hoo. first off, Boo-hoo. first off, all right, he's in Texas. Yeah. If you live in Texas and aren't living in Austin, you most likely have rifles and ammo in your house. <laughs> yes. Ballistic vest? He was military. Yeah. Why wouldn't he have stuff like that? He has he has, I'm assuming, enough rank to be able to get stuff like that easily. And bomb like making, after bomb making materials, here's the thing. I probably have bomb making materials <laughs> under my sink. Exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. I could probably build a bomb with whatever type of cleaners are under my sink. Mm-hmm. So that to me that voids any of that out. I agree. But I feel unless there's a how to build a bomb guide. Yeah, unless you recently Google searched how to make a bomb out of <laughs> these <things>. Clorox or <laughs> Kleenex or something. I don't know. If you pee in bleach, you can create mustard gas. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't see how they identified him. Whatever the case, though. We both agree that, like, if we're gonna have a society based on civil rights and civil liberties and you can't have you can't have flying bomb. robots you can't have flying you can't have flying terminator robots no. <laughs> you can't have that no <laughs> like ain't gonna work if you wanna do that after the court case like if you wanna if you wanna make that like part of the Texas constitution mm-hmm. like if you kill more than three police officers like we we have the ability to blow you up with a robot, like after the court case, like that can be your jur- that can be like bomb robot, <laughs> and you know deal with deal with that, yeah. but not beforehand. <laughs> like you have you have to be able, and I think that that brings to light like essentially what people are mad about is, you know due process, you know, with regard to the criminal justice system. Yes. You know, we haven't seen real due process, even for celebrities in the longest time. Like, I would argue that... How the fuck people going to jail for drugs longer than... Somebody going... Turner. Yeah. Like, if... Where's the due process there, homie? Yeah. I I don't know. If... And just in general, sending people to jail for a plane is just yeah, fuck dumb. you, <laughs> fuck you, <laughs> yeah, fuck you, fuck <laughs> you. Yeah. 
So it's clear, I mean, I will never say that I respect people who go out of their way to kill people, but I will say that if we as a country are going to have these laws in place, you gotta fucking follow them. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if, you know... It doesn't matter how many lies you have to put down in defense of those liberties. That's what we fought wars for. We yeah. literally sacrificed people to say, these are our rules, follow them. Yeah. That is what war is. That's essentially what war is. Bro, I don't like how you're living. I uh, no. I want to expand my territory, or I just think you're looking at mine a little too begrudgingly. <laughs> so. I don't like the cut of your jib, sir. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to war. <laughs> I love that as, like, when you get in a fight with somebody, I will literally go to war with you, <laughs> motherfucker. You don't even know. <laughs> Think you know what intensity is? Five months, you're gonna find shit in your shoes. <laughs> Does not end. Oh my goodness. What are we doing? <laughs> Talking about pooping in shoes. I do have to leave in 20 minutes. Tw Jesus Christ. Uh. In that case, we can skip that topic. Cause Which one? Hurricanes. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't give a shit. I don't give enough shit. <laughs> Fuck them. Uh, I guess... You had something you wanted. Oh, yeah. I wanted to ask you about uh, CrossFit, because you were a coach for the longest time there. Not the longest time, but yes, I do. Well, here's the thing. I'm still coaching it, but I'm coaching it the way that I want to coach it. Mm -hmm. So, I love Olympic weightlifting, but most of the people, unless you're a high-level cross-lead... Cross-lead? Cross cross-lead? <laughs> unless you're a high-level cross-lead... Is that cross a word? Lead, Is that a word? You should find that out. <laughs> um, yeah, unless you're a high-level CrossFit athlete, most of the time, in your Metcons, so your metabolic conditioning circuits, when you're doing... Mm, 28 power snatches or 30 clean and jerks most of the time unless like you're really solid with it that movement pattern looks like shit mm -hmm. especially with the snatch because the setup is <laughs> I know you're making jokes <laughs> but the setup is so important for those I mean in, in all honesty and There's nothing more important than setting up for a good snatch. Exactly. <laughs> For <laughs> You gotta grip that bar. <laughs> but, you have um, to eat that shit like groceries. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, there's the thing. People become strong enough mm -hmm. that they can do a power snatch without doing a power snatch. And by that, I mean they can really just, oh, I'm gonna... The bar's on the ground, and I'm gonna lift it over my head. And yeah. it's going back to the ground. And they can do that 28 times and fine. Without even realizing. Yeah, yeah. but they're not snatching. So They're just lifting a bar. Exactly, they're yeah. just lifting a bar. And when you're cleaning, if you're not doing mm. that the way that you're supposed to be doing it, you're just moving a bar from the ground to your shoulder. Like, And if you use your hip in there, you don't probably even know how you did because you, you didn't pay enough attention to it. Mm. But So really what you're doing is, if you want to get better at these lifts, like, yes, you want volume... But you want good volume. Because here's the thing, if you're doing, let's say it's a strength circuit, you're doing a couple sets of a few reps, mm -hmm. and then you're going to go into your volume work? Why not keep the volume, like... Why not save all that for the volume work? Yeah, well, well, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. So, you can build that strength base there, mm -hmm. but your volume work should be... Mm -hmm beautiful consistent movement yeah and if it's not beautiful consistent movement all you're doing is taking away from all of the work that you just put in mm -hmm. because why do you want your strength to be why do you want your skill level to be on point so you can lift the most weight mm -hmm. 
why you want to be the strongest. You can lift the most weight. So what do you have to do? You have to practice good movement patterns. Mm -hmm. So what I really, what I want to do, which is why I'm lucky I have this opportunity, is I'm gonna get coaching Olympic weightlifting, but separately mm -hmm. coaching non barbell boot camps. Okay. So like no Olympic weightlifting. This is gonna be tires. It's gonna be kegs. It's gonna be kettlebells. It's gonna be body weight, like strongman shit. Mm -hmm. More natural, but it doesn't require as much technique. So like you can really go ham with that. Mm -hmm. Without, with like while like expanding on, not expanding on muscle on muscular imbalances as much as I mean fixing muscular imbalances. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So really, like, yeah. That's sorry. No, you're good. Kind of went off into a little bit of a tangent. No, it's fine. Uh, what I was gonna ask you though was like, I listened to Joe's. Joe Rogan's podcast yesterday with Michael Shermer. Yes, and I downloaded that. I'm going <laughs> to listen to it. You're going to like this part, because they talked about uh, CrossFit and, you know, how it inter how it intersects with religion and, you know, secularism as a whole. What's the difference between a workout of the day and a gospel? Mm. You In see. regards to somebody who's die hard into into that well let me put it this way okay if I was to look at CrossFit mm -hmm. in church terms mm -hmm. I wouldn't say gospel as much as I would say the homily so think about this think about this think about this so you do your gospel okay and that's really, you could say that the gospel is the core behind what you're doing that day. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're really trying to focus on pushing and pulling. So the big movements are push, squat, um, pull, hinge, and, um, and pressing. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you're focusing on the push and the pull that day. Your gospel is you want to balance the push and the pull. Mm -hmm. So you create this workout that's built around balancing the push and the pull. But everybody's different. Mm -hmm. So why do they do a homily? I, I don't, did, did you have to sit through church? No. Okay, I did for a long time. Um, I had the I had I, my mom was my mom was grateful. She was like, if you don't want to go, you don't have to. It's just like. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like that. But what I, I, I like the homily because it's different. So the gospel, it could be whatever the fuck the gospel is. The gospel mm -hmm. is this. All right. So like art and science, art and science, the concreteness of art and science is like mm -hmm. the gospel. And then the homily is like philosophy. So it flips it all upside down. So the homily is how does this relate to you? How can you take this message into life? And why I bring that up is uh, as in relation to what the workout of the day is, is mm -hmm. the workout of the day, well, yes, it's it varies by box unless you follow main site, which a lot of places still do. They just mm -hmm. follow everything that main site posts. That's like mainstream Christianity versus Catholicism or Baptism. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, but... So here's the thing, all these workouts are infinitely scalable. Mm -hmm. So if you come in and you don't have legs, we're going to find something for you to do. <laughs> no, like like for real. Yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 <laughs> I, I can't imagine just somebody rolling up to a crossword place. Yo, I'm here to work out. <laughs> Dude, he <laughs> badass. Did you do push-ups? Yeah. You're good. <laughs> Look up, um, oh, I want to say his name is Logan Aldrich. Uh... Oh, I hope I hope that's right. So if anybody's listening, look him up. Um, but he's he's the shit, man. I saw this dude at Wadapalooza doing double unders with one arm. So a double under is you jump rope, but it goes under your feet twice. Yeah. He's doing it with one arm. <laughs> All right. And adaptive athletes are hardcore motherfuckers. Yeah. But so the, the point is the homily is this is your opportunity to let's say you're not a high level athlete. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why we have the gospel. It's push and pull. Mm -hmm. Personally, 
I don't give a fuck what the gospel says. I care about developing that push and that pull. So mm -hmm. what am I going to do? I'm going to find a way to modify that workout based around your capabilities and your needs. Mm -hmm. And we're going to find a way to develop your push and develop your pull. And that's not going to be the same for you as it is for her or it is for this dude who's a competitor or this dude who's trying to be a competitor. It's all going to be different. Mm -hmm. So I would say homily more than gospel only because it does change in such a way. And if you're talking about the most hardcore people, mm -hmm. I mean, you're kind of right, mm -hmm. but they'll always do, like, if they're high-level athletes, they're doing more. So let's mm -hmm. say, or, or, or they have their own programming me, for their high level of performance, so that changes it, yeah. Let me let me introduce this this little aspect into it. Okay. In regards to, like, let's say, like, Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, yeah. having, needing to essentially give yourself up to a higher power, you know, in regards yeah. to, you know, where, you know... You know, this is how I want to live my life. I want to be able to do this. Yeah, you want you to know, throw yourself to... into something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Adding that aspect of, you know, wanting to be more. Yeah. And having, not necessarily goals, but, you know, having the ability to go out and, you know, say, you know, I've been doing this for this many days, you know, I've done, I've done this many water paloozas, I've done, yeah, like, Corey, Corey Gregg will be like, I've been I, squatting I've been for doing... 600 straight days, yeah, because yeah, that dude's been squatting for more than a year, like, <laughs> only, like, every day, but, like, that, that aspect, that aspect of it, like, you know, what's, in, in regards to that, what's the difference between, you know, your workout and, you know, giving yourself to, you know, such a thing that, you know, could potentially take over your life. Like, what do you mean? Your, like, commitment. You know, I'll say it, I'll say it this way. Uh, with... With AA, there is, you know, your your 12 steps. You know, first you have to give yourself up to high power, admit that you are an alcoholic, and do... You make you give yourself up to God? Higher power. Oh, God. Why? All right. I just said, oh, God. But yeah. All right. I didn't know that. Okay. In terms of CrossFit, you're essentially, for the day, mm -hmm. giving yourself up to the workout and saying... You know, this is my this is my accomplishment for the day. I have to go and accomplish this. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. All right. And then in AA, you have, you know, your ninety day chip. You know, your yeah, six yeah. month chip. Mm hmm. You in get CrossFit. You get your muscle up. You you get these progressions. You graduate to different movements. Yes. A, a, you graduate to a harder wad or more. More volume, more, sets. more weight. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, you develop work capacity. You know, yeah, once yeah. you start getting into it, you know, at your one year, you go up and you give you give a speech on how you did it for a year. At CrossFit, you know, you do your water palooza or you go to games. You know, mm -hmm. where where do you know, especially with our generation, moving away from you know common religion, you know, mm -hmm. Islam, Judaism, Christianity, Buddhism, okay. and going more towards, you know, secularism and yeah. atheism, you know, agnostic, and just finding things that we're committed to. Yeah. What's the difference? There's not much of a difference. So here's the thing. Um, actually, what pisses me off a little bit, I'm going to bring this up, and it's going to contradict what I'm going to say after it, but CrossFit's very re uh, religious. Mm -hmm. Like, so many of their athletes are, like, Christ followers. Mm -hmm. It's insane. But, I've shared this article, so I know what you're talking about, that talked about someone who compared CrossFit to religion. Mm -hmm. Because of, basically, here's the thing. You can have your traditional religion, 
or you could have this physical environment where what you're talking about actually i'm stuck oh. on my face full of mac and cheese <laughs> <laughs> you, what, you, you have this physical environment where literally everybody is supporting each other mm -hmm. like you will see a person who deadlifts 600 pounds cheering on a woman who's about to pr her deadlift by five pounds mm -hmm. and it's and it's 135, mm -hmm. which I'm not saying is bad by any means, because where you are is where you are, mm -hmm. and that only means that you're on a stepping stone. Stop giving up. them safe space. Call yeah. them a bunch of pussies. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 for real though. It just means that you are where you are, and you have you're making the steps in order for you to get where you're trying to go. But the thing about this support system is it helps keep you on that path of where you're trying to go. So a lot of people they they can go into gyms and see people deadlifting 600 pounds and look and be like, well, fuck, I'm never going to deadlift 600 pounds and I'm going to have to train next to these people. Or you can be supported by the person who deadlifts 600 pounds and before you know it, be deadlifting three times more than you thought, which is still not 600 pounds, but you're like, you get a little bit more of this, holy shit, I can do this. And a little bit more of this, holy shit, I believe in myself. Mm -hmm. And that can transfer over to real life. And the reason why I think it's really beneficial, I mean, for me personally, CrossFit was a home mm. when... Literally? I, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I basically lived there. But, um, like, my first box, mm -hmm. uh, and the second box especially, like, Chad was like, do you ever go home? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, so I had just moved to Florida. I didn't know anybody. I signed up for this... Thing. Me too, then. <laughs> well, I I, didn't, I, lived in, I lived in um Miami. Miami. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't live close to you. Yeah. Um. So I was like, well, shit. What am I like? I want to. I want to exercise. I've never tried. Like I. I know. I, that's all. I, I tried CrossFit, but I was like, let me let me see what this community is about down here. Mm. And like, just instantly hooked by the ability. Like, what? Basically, like by overcoming these physical feats. I was able to have a lot more of a commanding mental personality. Mm -hmm. like I was able to believe that I could achieve certain things that I wasn't able to before because now I had proof that I could overcome obstacles. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that proof that I could really overcome obstacles. That was the, f this is the, like this fitness thing mm -hmm. is the first thing that I've had to put a hundred percent of myself into and really earn it in for myself. Like mm -hmm. I can't necessarily have help like I can have someone coach me of course mm -hmm. but you can do all the coaching in the world but that's not going to get me stronger if I don't put in the work to do it like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like I have like you have to grind out to get the results that you want and that was the first thing that I really like it gave that me drew you in. yeah it gave me something to really work at and something to work for mm -hmm. and with a community that was supportive it, I don't know, it's, it, it's something very, I'll say special, um, so I entirely understand where you're coming from with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, it is, it's a cult, it really is. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. Interesting. But, like, there's not, like, it's not, like, you did, nobody drinks Kool-Aid. <laughs> It's just you guys like, don't have to. You guys don't have to put a dollar in the bucket every time you go. No, no. You do have to ring the ring the PR bell when you hit a new one rep, though. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking crazy cultists. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh god. All right. But yeah, oh, uh, does that right. answer your question about it? Not really. I just wanted to hear how you'd respond to oh, that. Okay. Just because when you go and listen to that episode, you're gonna. You're gonna probably text me and be like, "Fuck, yeah, I need. I wish I would answer it this way." Okay. You're you're gonna you're gonna have something go through your head. I okay. You will. It's like an hour and a half into it, so you're gonna have to wait. But oh, that's fine. It's a good one. But yeah, I just want to see how you'd respond to that. Okay. Cool. Anything your end you want to talk about or oh um, it's basically just been my questions to you this time this entire time you're in the melbourne beach area and you want to learn how to move really fast around a bar and 
get some West Side Barbell Strength Training Twang thrown in with that shit, hit me the fuck up. Give him your social media. Shoe Blime. S C H U Blime. At, I mean, on Instagram, not at anything. Um, and then my name is Mitchell G. Schubiger, and you can add me on Facebook. It was an honor to be on here. Always an honor to have you on, sir. Thank you, brother. All right. That's been episode number 25. Hopefully we'll be around for 25 more, and we'll do this a few times. Oh, for sure. Especially this one. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, um... Oh, no, it's all good. You sure? Yeah. All right. You guys have a good evening. Peace!